Can you tell why the pencil in this picture that is placed in this glass filled with water appears to be pen? Well, that is due to a very interesting phenomenon associated with light called the refraction of light. And that is our today's topic. Light travels in a straight line through air. Because the air molecules are not close together, so there's very little deflection for the light particles. But once a ray of light travels from air into some other material, it can either get reflected, absorbed, or get transmitted, depending on the type of the material. So for example, if we have a glass slab here and a ray of light that enters from air into this glass, because the molecules in a glass are closely packed, so when the ray of light enters from air into the glass, so it bounces off these molecules, and hence its speed decreases, first of all, and then it also changes its path. So this change of the speed and the direction of the ray of light is called refraction of light. So here you could see if a ray of light travels through air, it passes straight through. But if the second material is, instead of air, a glass, now it's much denser. So the ray of light, as it strikes the air glass boundary, some part of this ray of light is reflected, but that's only a small portion of the ray of light. The majority of the ray of light passes through the glass because glass is transparent. Now, you could clearly see the ray of light first is changing its path. And secondly, if we can look at the wave instead of the ray, you could also see something very interesting. The wavelength of this ray of light as it's entering the glass is the distance between these two consecutive lines. And you could see that in glass, the wavefronts are closer together. Or you could say that the wavelength has reduced. So since the density of glass is much larger than the density of air, that means in a denser material, the ray of light would have a shorter wavelength. And since wavelength is proportional to the speed of the ray as well, so that means a ray of light also has much lesser speed in glass as compared to the speed in air. So there are primarily three changes for this ray of light as it enters from air into glass or from any less denser material to a more denser material. First of all, the ray of light undergoes a reduction in its speed. The speed reduces. Secondly, the wavelength reduces. And then the path also changes. Now let's have a look at the change in the path. So we first need to determine the angle at which this ray of light enters into the glass. Now remember, the angle is always measured between this incident ray and this normal, a 90 degree line at the air glass boundary. So the angle is always measured between the incident ray and the normal. And we could use this protector then to measure the angle. So in this situation, you could see the angle is 45 degrees roughly. Now, as the ray of light goes from air into the glass, it bends towards the normal from its original path. So now the angle of refraction in the glass, the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, is less than 30 degrees. So the incident ray had a much larger angle. The refracted ray has a smaller angle. That means the ray of light has changed its path and it has moved towards the normal. It always does that. Now you can also change this angle of incidence and see what happens to the angle of refraction starting from a smaller angle of incidence. The angle of incidence as it increases you could see the angle of refraction also increases. So you could take a few values for the angle of incidences and the angle of refractions and then we could take the sign of angle of incidence and the sign of angle of refraction. If you could just draw a graph between 
sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction, you could say you could see that it's a straight line. Now, the slope of this sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction graph gives us the refractive index of this material. The refractive index tells us how much ray of light is going to get refracted in that particular medium. So for example, if we replace glass with water, glass has a slightly smaller refractive index than glass. You can see that the bending of the ray of light in glass was more prominent than in water. So greater the refractive index, more would be the refraction or smaller would be the angle of refraction of the ray of light in the denser medium. Now let's have a look at a couple of questions. So uh, this is a past paper question that states that um, the figure shows a monochromatic red light uh, in there incident on a glass lock at an angle of incidence of 50 degrees. So you could see that the angle of incidence first of all is measured between the incident ray and the normal that is uh, drawn at the air and glass boundary. So the first question states what is a mono what is meant by monochromatic light? So mono means one. So a light that is composed of just one color. White light is composed of seven colors basically. So monochromatic light because it's red light, it has just the one color. So for this red ray, the refractive index of the glass is 1.58. The refractive index is actually a ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. Calculate the angle of refraction for this ray. So angle of incidence is given and the refractive index is also given. So you could find the angle of refraction by rearranging this equation. That is sine of angle of refraction would be then equal to sine of the angle of incidence divided by the refractive index. And since the angle of incidence is 50 degrees. So it's simply sine of 50 degrees divided by N, the refractive index, which is 1.52. But that will give us sine of angle of refraction, not the angle of refraction. So to find the angle of refraction, we then have to take the inverse sine of, of this fraction. So the angle of refraction would be sine inverse of the sine of angle of 50 over 1.52. We just put these values in our calculator, we get uh, a number. And th that gives us an angle of refraction of 30 degrees. So the point that I've made uh, earlier as well was that as a ray of light enters from air into glass, that ray of light bends towards normal. So if the actual path, if the original path of the ray of light was this, the ray of light then bends towards this normal. So that means it changes its path. So when it changes its path, it moves towards the normal. And hence the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. So um, we already found out that the angle of refraction is 30 degrees. But what happens when a ray of light travels from glass back into the air or from a denser material to a rare material? So we can look at that in our next video and a few more details about total internal reflection in that video too. So see you in that video.